Jorge. I think I may have overdone it last week. I mean, I'm barely wearing any makeup this week as it is. Hey, dolls, it's me, Wilma Fingerdew, with the Fingerdew Review of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 15, Episode 13. Dare I say the shadiest episode yet? How could it not be? We're down to the top five queens, and some of those queens, Lucy, are getting desperate. But before we get into it, I need to take a moment to thank this week's fabulous tipper dues, the lovely and generous Kevin from Boston, Dr. Kev's gal, and my tipper do boyfriend, Vito. Thanks, dolls, from the bottom of my heart. Seriously. I also want to send a shout-out to Queen Rodney Erickson from my finger do family on Patreon, who I seem to have left out of my credit roll for some reason. My sincerest apologies, Rodney. I know you said I didn't have to give you a shout-out, but... What can I say? I wanted to, because I love you. Seriously. Now, Jorge, drink me. Oh, okay, what's this? A fat girl special. Oh, vodka and soda? Okay. Mm. Refreshing. Thank you, Jorge. Although a little rude. Okay, the queens kicked this episode off by bidding a bodacious bye-bye to Selena Estides. But it was clear by her message that Estides wasn't happy about Lucy saying her name as the queen she thought should go home next. And by wasn't happy, Estides was pissed. Naturally, Lucy was surprised that she was in the bottom at all. You'd think this would become less and less of a surprise each time that it happens. Maybe ignorance really is bliss. Mistress admitted that if she let her personal thoughts get involved, she would have said Lucy should have gone home next, too, but she gave her pageant answer of wanting Sasha, her biggest competition, to go home, proving that Mistress was still in her congenial era. I don't know about you, but I'm getting tired of Mistress announcing all these eras. Can't we just agree that this season has become the dawning of the age of Mistress and be done with it? Who knows, it might shut her up. Lux made no excuses and stood by saying Lucy's name because, well, that's how she feels. Needless to say, Lucy didn't agree with her, although that didn't stop her from taking it personally, which is too bad because clearly Mistress was hoping that Lucy would reveal her real feelings. And by that, she meant flip a table. What is this, the housewives now? The next day in the workroom, the top five acknowledged how tight a race it was going to be to reach top four. And Lucy said that it would come down to the tiniest details. Mark it down. She said what she said. Seriously. Regardless, Mistress promised that no matter what happened, she'd be making top four. And no one argued with her. That's probably because Rue arrived before anyone could argue with her. And this week, Rue had a mini challenge. The queens would be playing Spill the Tea. If the queen's answers matched the majority, they got a point. This must have been a relief to Lucy because she didn't have to be right. Just in the majority. For some reason, Anastasia of Beverly Hills President Norvina was there to co-host. I get it. Her company's a sponsor, but between her over-the-top wardrobe and robot delivery of stock catchphrases, they could have had a drag race queen do the same job. I'm sure they're not all busy. I was kind of hoping Norvina was there because she had a new makeup palette to hawk. But no, apparently she just wanted to show off her expensive outfit. Hell, if I could fit into an outfit like that, I'd want to show it off too. The Queen's first question was, which Queen makes you laugh the hardest? Everyone said Mistress except Anitra, who picked Lucy. Rue didn't ask which Queen they laughed at the most. Seriously. Everyone got a point but Anitra. Question two was, which Queen thinks she's the smartest? Well, everyone said Lucy, but Anitra, who this time picked Mistress. Clearly, Anitra thought Rue said smart ass. Personally, I thought it was funny that Lucy wasn't smart enough to understand that this question was an insult in itself. <laughs> Idiot. The third question was, which queen is the shadiest? Well, everyone said mistress. Lord knows I did. Question number four, which queen is the hairiest? Lucy, Anitra, and Sasha said mistress. Lux said Lucy for some reason, and mistress said Sasha. I'm not sure why. The fifth question was, which queen is most likely to steal your Anastasia Beverly Hills cosmetics? Everyone said mistress, which surprised me after Lux's security tag reveal last week. Oh! 
Question six was, which queen is most likely to steal your man? Mistress, Lucy, and Lux said Sasha, while Anitra and Sasha both said Anitra. Let's be honest. The correct answer was me. <laughs> Question seven was, which queen is most likely to have a sugar daddy? Everyone said Lux, except Lux, who said Sasha. I would have picked Sasha, too, only because of Lux and that security tag. There's no stealing when daddy's slopping the sugar. You hear what I'm saying? With Lucy in the lead, the last question was worth five points. Which queen is going home next? Well, because Lucy's no idiot and the game wasn't about being right, but being in the majority, she followed the herd and said herself, along with everyone else. Smart queen because it secured her the win. What's that make it now? Five wins for Lucy? And then it was time for my favorite maxi challenge of them all, the makeover challenge. I love this challenge because it leaves nowhere for these queens to hide. You're either good at it or you're not. I was predicting that Lux would not be because, well, she's the youngest. Sorry, I meant self-centered. Again! <laughs> this season's makeover challenge was inspired by Rue's high school drama teacher, Mr. Bill Pinnell. So this week, the queens would be making over some real-life hard-working teachers. God bless them all. They were Mrs. Layla Marchbanks, Miss Teresa Reyes, Mrs. Shannon Wallace, Mrs. Liza Mahoney, and Miss Sharon Tang. Because Lucy won the mini challenge, she got to pick her teacher to make over first, and then she got to assign everyone else's. Mistress seemed to enter her worried era. For the most part, Lucy picked well. She'd nabbed Mrs. Wallace for herself because they already looked like family. In a surprise move, well, it was a surprise to Mistress at any rate, because Lucy gave her Miss Tang, Anitra got Miss Mahoney, Sasha got Mrs. Marchbanks, and that left Lux with Miss Reyes. Much to Lux's obvious disappointment. I don't know about you, but I would have given Mrs. Mahoney to Mistress, Miss Tang to Lux, and Miss Reyes to Sasha. I give anyone a free ride at this point, I'm asking, seriously. Right away, all the queens spent time getting to know their teachers. Lucy's Mrs. Wallace's family resemblance went further than her face. They both almost shared a bra size. H! I didn't even know they went up that far. Hey, I may be a big girl, but I'm not that big. Mistress found out that her teacher, Miss Tang, was an out and proud high school art teacher. They talked about how important it must be for her to represent a safe place for the students to be able to be themselves under the guidance of someone who knew exactly what it was they were going through. It was beautiful. Sasha was tickled to hear that her teacher, Mrs. Marchbanks, was not only a Drag Race fan, but that she watched the show with her husband. Unfortunately, her two boys didn't seem bothered, but Mrs. Marchbanks didn't care. She was too focused on having the full drag queen experience, and that involved padding. Always the good mama, even though she'd never used them before. Sasha showed the teacher how it was done. I think she showed her too much. As for Lux, I'd be surprised if she could tell you anything about her teacher at this point, because, well, she seemed mostly to ignore her while she tried to make her something to wear. Priorities. There was some smack talk and an impromptu walk-off between Lucy and Mistress's teachers. Although no one was declared the winner, Anitra did admit that Lucy's teacher, Lala, was serving it. With a name like Lala, she had just better. Just saying. Of course, Rue dropped by to check on the Queen's progress, because she knows he. Sasha and Mrs. Marchbanks were up first. Immediately, Mrs. Marchbanks revealed that her drag queen name was Ferocity Colby and that she wasn't putting any restrictions on where Sasha planned to take her. Apparently, it was somewhere that she could ravage her husband. I really wasn't paying attention. Mistress and Miss Tang were up next. Miss Tang's drag name was Madame Fang, and she and Mistress wanted to make sure to represent because they both grew up not seeing anyone like themselves from the Latin community that was openly queer. Looks like they'll be giving it to us with both barrels. Pow, pow. Mm, mm, mm. See, I'm not a big girl. Anitra and Miss Mahoney were next. Miss Mahoney teaches kindergarten and was hoping that being on Drag Race would teach her kids not to be afraid to try. Bless her. Lux and Mrs. Reyes were next. Mrs. Reyes' drag name was Aja Azul. Aja Azul hoped that her students would see her on Drag Race and know that she's not going to judge them and accept them for who they were. Such a good teacher. 
Finally, it was Lucy and Lala LaDuca's turn. Rue asked Lucy how she felt about being called out last week as a queen that should go home. Of course, Lucy said it didn't bother her, which seemed to bother Lux and Mistress to some degree. I'm just saying. Before Rue left, she had a surprise. To have the full tilt boogie drag race experience, the queens would also have to coach their teachers through a lip sync for your life performance. Well, if that didn't light a fire under their padded asses, they were hot enough already. <laughs> Of course, that meant that all the queens had to spend some time with their teachers on the runway to prepare. For the most part, it went as well as you'd expect. Anitra tried to get Electra to duck walk, but the best she could muster was a duck squat. It was as glamorous as it sounds. Lux's teacher, Aja Azul, needed the most work, but then, well, she was given the least amount of direction. And when Lux saw what Aja Azul was working with, she got even less. Bless. And then it was runway day. As the queens got their teachers into drag, Anitra talked to Electra about how kids are taught homophobia and transphobia and whether they can unlearn that behavior. Electra believes that they can, but they have to be willing. Also, adults need to talk to their children about it. Truer words, seriously. As Lux was making up Asia Azul, she got to know her, finally. Lux was surprised to hear that all Asia's kids live somewhere in the rainbow spectrum and she seemed to warm up to her a little more. Enough so that she wanted her to enjoy her first time in drag, although she was glad Asia was giving her creative freedom to do what she wanted, like Lux knows any other way. <laughs> although there was a lot of love in the room, that didn't stop Mistress from judging Lucy's progress with Lala. She even tried to psych Lala out about her performance, rude. At least when Sasha called Lux's teacher one of the heads from Easter Island, she did it privately. Well, at the time. I don't think doing that on camera makes it private. Wait, are we all the ones eavesdropping now? And then it was time for the runway. I wasn't a big fan of Rue's look this week. That asymmetrical plaid number with the black and white ribbon looked like it didn't fit her very well. And her wig looked thirsty. I know about thirsty wigs. I'm just... Michelle was looking light and breezy in her low-cut strappy number. Ross was looking bright and sparkly in another one of his sequined sweatshirts. And... Joining the judges this week, singer and celebrity drag race alumni, Haley Kiyoko. Up first, the makeovers. Sasha and Ferocity Colby were up first. I thought they looked great. I loved the makeup. I loved the padding. And their dresses were fabulous. Although, I do wish that Ferocity's nude panel was wider because, as it was, it looked a little like a satchel strap across her chest. And, you know... Satchel strap was my drag queen name in high school. Still, finger due for the Colbys. Lucy and Lala were next, and all I could say is the resemblance was uncanny. The only thing I would have changed was Lucy's wig. I wish it had been styled more like Lala's, but still, I wasn't mad at it. Finger due for the Leducas. Sounds dirty. Mistress and Madame Fang were next, and even though I thought Madame was getting eaten up by that boa and wig combo, she looked good. But, more importantly, she looked like Mistress, so I naturally gave them a finger due as well. The obvious fail this week was Lux and Asia Azul. Don't get me wrong, Asia looked amazing, and if her drag mother had been Jennifer Coolidge, I'm sure they would have won. But, unfortunately, she looked nothing like Lux, regardless of her heritage. Their outfits looked nothing alike, their hairstyles were completely different, and, as good as Asia's makeup was, it was nowhere near how Lux was wearing hers. This was obviously a finger don't, I'm so sorry to say. Thank goodness Anitra and Electra closed the show. Even with their subtle differences, they couldn't have looked more alike if they tried. I thought Anitra did an excellent job with Electra's makeup, and their outfits were super fun. Clearly, this was the finger do of the evening. The big finger do. As far as the judges went, the Colbys were a big hit, and so was their padding. The Laducas did well too, but Ross made a good point about Lala's shoes needing to be stoned or thrown out. I, I don't know. No one had anything negative to say about Mistress and Madame, even after Mistress admitted to offering her $500 to shave her eyebrows. I didn't think her eyebrows were that bad. As for Luxination, Michelle called out Lux for failing to provide a family resemblance, but everyone was amazed at Asia's makeover, mostly because she looked so much like Jennifer Coolidge, but... What was a bigger shock was that Asia didn't know who Jennifer Coolidge was. Well, if that doesn't put you in the bottom, I don't know what will. Seriously. 
It was clear that the stars of this week's show were Anitra and Electra, but there was a moment where the conversation about their arm foreskin overshadowed them. Is anyone else surprised that Ross came up with the term arm foreskin? And then the teachers got their real drag on as they lip sync for their lives. This was fun to watch and everyone had a good time, which is exactly what drag is about. Seriously. Meanwhile, back in the Untucked Lounge, Lux was feeling a certain way about being in the bottom for the first time. Of course, she blamed Lucy for strategizing, like her inability to make her teacher makeover look more like her than Jennifer Coolidge had nothing to do with it. You ask me, Lux was so disappointed in getting who she got that she didn't even try, which I have to say surprised me. For someone who's come too damn far and looked too damn good throughout this competition, I thought she would have tried harder to make it work, no matter what her partner's ethnicity was. We've seen lots of queens do it, so her blaming Lucy doesn't fly with me, I'm just saying. Of course, Lucy was clearly the other queen who was in the bottom, although she didn't think she deserved to be. I know, shocker, right? Lucy felt she didn't get enough praise for the garbage she constructed, but at least she was able to admit that they never can tell what the judges are going to harp on. Good for Lucy. I like that Lux asked Lucy why she wasn't given the only other black person in the room. Even more, I like Lucy admitting that she did it to throw Lux off her game. She said it was because Lux was big competition, but then Lux pointed out that Sasha was big competition and she didn't throw her off her game. That's when the truth came out. Lucy told Lux that Sasha wasn't the one who said she wasn't creative or unique. Whoop, there it is! To clarify, Lux said she didn't say she wasn't creative, it's just that as far as Lucy's drag goes, she's seen it before. Unlike Mistress, who all but admitted that her wardrobe was all stuff she'd worn before. So someone's seen it before, is all I'm saying. Speaking of Mistress, it wouldn't be season 15 without her stirring the pot. She asked Lux if she thought the dress Lucy had on right there and then was creative and unique. Lux said no. God bless Anitra. Although she didn't say it to Lucy, she did say that someone's opinion of your drag shouldn't change your idea of your drag, unless it's the judges. And even then. To make matters worse, even though she wasn't asked, Mistress told Lucy she was surprised that she would wear a dress like that when compared to what she's worn before. I agreed with Lucy. I thought it was very her. Don't get me wrong, the fabric was meh. I would have gone with sequins, but then... That's just me. Mistress continued to ride Lucy by asking her if she thought everything played out the way she had hoped and if she thought she could beat Lux in a lip sync. Clearly, Mistress was taking her last opportunity to kick Lucy while she was down. Bully says what? Mistress then complimented all the other queens on how well they did, especially Anitra, although Mistress did feel she had the biggest transformation. Although I feel that Mistress could achieve her look by slapping a big old wig and oversized boa on anyone. Tell me I'm wrong. To change the subject, they talked about how great Lux's teacher was as a mom being so supportive of her queer kids. It was refreshing for them because clearly that wasn't their experience. So here's to supportive parents wherever they may be. Thank goodness their numbers are growing is all I'm saying. Seriously. Lucy surprised me by saying she didn't come from a drag family. She didn't have a drag mother or any drag daughters for that matter. I feel like on some level, that explains a lot. She asked the others how important their drag families were. Sasha said it was very important, especially when your biological family wasn't in the picture. And then, well, she was interrupted by a video message from her drag daughter, season 14 superstar Carrie Colby. And just when I was starting to feel sorry for Lucy being the only one who didn't get a message for home, there they were. Her mom, dad, sister, hot brother, and friend, Jeffrey, and her little dog, too. No wonder Lucy doesn't have a drag family. She's got a very loving and supportive family at home. Needless to say, there were tears of joy there. Just think. Lucy all but admitted how hard it was for her to be away from them and that all she wants to do is make them proud, which is why she may come off as robotic or too focused in the game. I see that. And then their new drag daughter showed up for a final kiki. I have to say, every time the camera cut to Lala Laduka, I thought it was Lucy. She did such a great job making Lala look like her. But I get why they were in the bottom, I'm just saying. Anitra's teacher thanked Anitra for making her drag dreams come true and wanted to stay in touch after the show. And then 
Jason ruined it all by telling them that it was their five-minute warning. Boo, Jason! Cutie. Back on the main stage, Rue announced that Anitra was this week's winner, and in the bottom, along with Lux, was surprise, surprise, Lucy. They had to lip sync to Haley Kyoko's For the Boys. I have to admit, part of me was hoping that Lucy was going to pull this lip sync out of her butt. Unfortunately, her mediocre cartwheel was no match for Lux's panther-like moves on that runway. So, it was no surprise to anyone, except probably Lucy, that Lux shantayed, and it was Miss LaDuca who sashayed away. She was clearly devastated, poor thing. So, now it's down to the final four. The scuttlebutt on the interwebs is there's one more elimination. Rue's only taking three queens to the finale. Who do you think it should be? Personally, I wouldn't be upset to see the season 15 bully mistress not make it, but that's not because I don't think she's capable of making it. Lux has been burning up that runway all season, so I'd love to see her make the finale just to see what she would wear. But if she's got cut before that, I don't think I'd be upset either. The clear standouts this season, with three challenge wins each, Maxi wins, are Anitra and Sasha, so it's hard for me to see a finale without them. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and while you're down there, dirty, give this video a thumbs up if you like it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and check out my links in the description box for more ways you can help support the Finger Do Review. Until next week, this me! Ah, serious. Poor Lucy LaDuca. God, she was crushed. That's the hard thing about doing a competition show. Everyone thinks they're going to win. Everyone thinks they're going to win. But then that's the right attitude to go in there with. But you're up against, what was it this year, 15 other queens? You can't, you can't be the best out of 16 without changing stuff up and, and, and working on the fly. And I think that Lucy was thrown off her game too much through this whole process. Bless her heart. I don't know. I, I bet you it'll be Lux, Sasha, and Anitra. I don't know why I don't see Mistress in there, but I just, I think that Lux is more exciting on the runway. Not that Mistress isn't great on the runway, but, you know, she's another one. I like her drag. It's gorgeous, but it's not breaking any rules or changing the game at all. And I feel like Anitra and, and Lux do that anyway. And Sasha, well, she just... She's just such an exciting performer. There's something about Sasha where it's so effortless that she looks like she's not even competing. And and I can see some people thinking that she should go just because she's maybe not breaking a sweat, but she doesn't have to. She's a superstar. I know what that's like. I'll pressure.